This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the president and CEO of Ethos Gold, Mr. Craig Roberts. Greg, how are you this morning? I'm good, thanks, Gerardo. How are you? I'm excellent. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you as well. So listen, you. I'm expecting big things out of Ethos, and I know the company is called Ethos Gold. It, it, it could appropriately be called Ethos Gold and Vanadium, and I want to talk about that in just a bit, Craig. But if you could give us a bit of background on your past successes, what you've done, and then let's talk about the company and what, what 2019 holds in store for us. Sure, sounds good. Uh, yeah, I mean, depends how far... You want to go back, but... Um, All 30 years, Craig. In... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I can go back even further. But uh, I grew up in Australia. Dad was a mining engineer, so I've sort of been around mining from when I was quite young and um, moved to Canada in the 1970s. I uh, did mining engineering out at UBC. I worked in a... Built a small operating mine with my dad, actually, right after university. Um put that into operation for about five years and then I went back and did an MBA. Uh, then I worked for Wright Engineers Fleur for about seven years, um, worked on a lot of feasibility studies for uh, precious metals, space metals, small and large underground open pit projects. So quite a broad experience, uh, quite a broad set of projects that I worked on there. And um, then 1996-7, I went into investment banking with First Marathon Securities, which was then acquired by National Bank Financial. So I worked on a lot of um, institutional equity financing and also M&A advisory work. Um, and uh, in early 2000s, I went to PI Financial with a, uh, a couple of partners there. And we did a lot of um, institutional equity financing between about 2003 and 2009 at PI Financial, um, at least several hundred sort of institutional equity financings. And then we formed uh, our own group, which is called Axman Resource Capital. We're, um, still in, we still have that. Um, we were pretty active for a few years. And now each of the partners from that have kind of moved on to running companies and doing other things in the mining industry. So, um, yeah, so quite a bit of experience over the years in operations, in um, the market side of things, both in equity financing and also a lot of M&A transactions and advisory work on those. Excellent. Now, I mentioned that you have two exciting projects, a potentially large vanadium project and an exciting gold project in Mexico. Now, I want to talk about both. But before that, I think it's important to talk a bit about the team that you've been able to bring together and maybe a little background into how Ethos was formed, um, because because the people are really important to testing the potential on both of those projects, which I understand will be tested this year. Sure. Okay, Ricardo, yeah. Sorry, Gerardo, yeah. Um, so uh, Ethos was formed originally by Gary Freeman, who founded Pediment Gold, and um, Pediment was sold to Argonaut, I think, in 2013 for about $130 million, and um, Gary formed Ethos during that time as kind of a follow-on company, Um and as uh, as you may know, unfortunately, Gary passed away almost, almost a year ago now. And so, um, you know, this company is a little bit of a legacy to Gary, actually. Gary's partner in the in ESOS was Mel Herdrick, who's um, a very experienced geologist, um, lived in Hermosillo for many decades and formerly felt starch. And so Mel is one of our one of the ethos directors and Mel's really the driver behind the La Parisma project in Chihuahua in Mexico, which is one of the two primary projects we currently have. So Mel will, um, is overseeing the early, earlier stage exploration, the permitting, and uh, we're moving towards um, drilling that project in, in the first quarter this year. So that, that's something that Mel's brought in. We can discuss in a little more detail. Um, in terms of the board, the other people are Michael Murphy, who's uh, joined the board. Michael was um, 
spent about 15 years in London in institutional sales with Credit Suisse, Merrill Lynch, um, ran one of the hedge funds there and um, came back to Vancouver, formed Torex Gold, which he uh, is still a director of and Torex is, um, they just announced their production for last year, about 350,000 ounces of gold. It's sort of roughly a billion dollar company and um, so Michael's got very strong experience both sort of on the market institutional side of things and also um, you know through his founding and um, development of Torex Gold and uh, the other director we have is Hank Van Alsen who's a well-known Vancouver mining entrepreneur. Hank's had quite a list of successes and has maintained quite a significant group of companies in in Vancouver and um, so those are the four directors we have and then uh, Joe Price has recently joined us as VP Exploration. Joe oversaw the um, exploration work we did on the uh, Pine Pass Vanadium project last year. Just did an outstanding job of running that program and she's agreed to come on board as VPX and kind of run a much larger program there this year and uh so those are sort of the key um uh board and and um management group that we have um we also we've put together quite a, a good list of um sort of advisors and consultants to help us with various aspects of the projects um maybe i just run through those fairly quickly but um the two prospectors that really identified the Pine Pass Vanadium project, uh, Jim Dawson and Murray McLaren, both extremely seasoned uh, Vancouver-based geologists, and um, they we we um, we did a deal on the Vanadium project from them, and they're sort of staying very actively involved with us in the project. Um, We've brought on Dr. Rod McElroy on metallurgy. Rod's been somebody that I worked with actually years ago at Fleur and Wright Engineers. Uh, he's been with AMEC and AMEC Wood for quite a number of years and still works for them on a part-time basis. But um, Rod's agreed to come on board to run the metallurgical program. And we're just kicking that off actually starting this week, in fact. Um, and then... We also are very actively um, sort of working on community relations and uh, permitting process for the Pine Pass project. And um, Michelle Tangway has agreed to come on board as a sort of a consultant to the company. She has a lot of experience with First Nations consultation and um, uh, it works as well with Alison Rippin Armstrong, who is... Um, Another person who's very experienced in um, in that type of work, and and so Michelle and Allison again have worked together to help us with the permitting process through next summer. Fantastic! Thank you for the background with Gary there, Craig, because it, the Gary was somebody that earned a lot of goodwill and was friendly to me, and so I I really appreciate that. I thought that was important to include. Let's talk about the projects you talked about, Pine Pass. You have a project that initial trenching indicates has over 100 meters in thickness, significant intervals of high-grade vanadium mineralization, and you have up to 20 kilometers of prospective strike. You just had news actually here recently indicating a 13% increase using a different assay method. And so I want to talk about the project and how you plan on delineating the potential because frankly the opportunity is huge you have a tiny market cap of just over 11 million canadian and a project that looks exciting in a space the vanadium space that obviously has been on quite a run can you speak to the project a bit and what how, how you plan on testing that yeah definitely try to yeah the um the the good thing about it from in terms of describing it is it's actually very simple um, ge uh, geologic model and, and sort of geometry to the deposit. So the the deposit um, is it was originally um, 
laid down in, in a very flat kind of tabula body, almost like a coal seam, if you can imagine that. And um, it was subsequently folded into kind of a very large U-shape, with, which is sort of order of magnitude, about a kilometer across. And so um, so the, the target body that we're going after is, based on the trenching, um, about a hundred, you know, order of magnitude, a hundred meters thick. I'm sure there'll be variability in that. You know, we've had trenches on surface of plus 200 meters of very of economic, you know, what we think will be economic mineralization. Um, so, so really, you know, in looking at the three dimensions of it in terms of thickness, I mean, you can easily see from the trench and we've done the potential for hundred meter thick, true thicknesses. Um, on the on what we call the east limb, it dips about forty five degrees, and uh, it looks like, from what we can see and from the macro geology, it looks like it will continue quite consistently um, down dip at, at that forty five degree angle. I mean, to to be proven by drilling, but based on everything we've seen from the surface geology, that's what we're projecting at this point. So, um, and then in, as you mentioned, in terms of strike length, the, this folded um, body continues from the highway, which the John Hart Highway, which is the deposit is located just on and north of, the, of a highway in northern British Columbia. So it continues from the highway about 10 kilometers to the northwest. So the two limbs of this, what we call the syncline, the dipping body, have strike expressions of, you know, up to 10 kilometers on our property. Hmm. So if you look at those three dimensions, the thickness, the down dip potential on each limb and the strike length, it's, you know, I won't, I won't throw numbers out there, but you can get to, you know, very large tonnage numbers very quickly it's very straightforward to explore because it's very simple um you know in terms of this geometry and uh, so we're actually planning quite a large drill program for this year um and you know we i think we have some quite good potential to develop a, a significant resource by the end of the summer well, I'll tell you why I get excited, Craig. You won't put the number out there, but I've done a little bit of the math myself. And, and let me be completely transparent. I'm biased. I participated in the recent financing. I like to eat my own cooking, but there's a potential here for greater than 25 million tons, assuming, of course, that, that the, the strike length and, and the thickness holds up. But you mentioned the simplicity of the project. And with the kind of grades that we've seen, if that bears out, that's exciting, again, relative to the 12, 11, $12 million Canadian market cap that you have right now. When can we expect to see testing of that target with the drill? Well, um, our current schedule is to mobilize in May and to initiate drilling in June. So, um, yeah, so that's, you know, that's, that's our um, schedule and we're working pretty aggressively towards making sure that happens. Perfect. Now, the neat part to this story is you also have a oxide gold target in Chihuahua, Mexico, that you're actually testing, I understand, before uh, the vanadium project. Can we talk about that La Purisima project in Mexico? Sure. Well, as mentioned, that was one that Mel Herdrick brought in, who is Gary's partner in, in Ethos, in Pediment, actually, originally, and now in, now uh, has joined Ethos Um it uh, La Parisma is an uh, it's an epithermal gold uh, deposit uh, project. It is um, it's located in an area in Chihuahua that's very flat road accessible, so it's not up in sort of remote mountains in the Sierra Madre that kind of thing. It's actually um, pretty much ideal from an access point of view. Um, the the land is privately owned, and we have a a deal with the the landowners to for long-term access to the project. So if we're successful in making a discovery, we've got a, a deal in place to give us through development of a project. Um, essentially, the project is um, uh, there's at least five identified northwest striking sort of subparallel epithermal veins 
pretty close to vertical. Um, there's some historic underground and open pit mining on them. Um, what really attracted Mel to the project is that there's quite a bit of evidence that there's gold mineralization between the veins, not just in the veins. So, hmm. um, you know, if the mineralization was just in the veins, we might be looking at it as sort of a plus five gram underground type target. But with this um, potential dissemination of gold between the veins and much more broad halo of mineralization, um, we're actually targeting it as a potential um you know, surface mineable type target. Now, you know, we haven't drilled yet, so we'll have to wait and see what the drilling uh, results are. But um, that's our conceptual target here is to um, identify, you know, economic grades of this disseminated mineralization outside of the veins, which in combination with the vein material would give us a tonnage and grade for a, sort of an open pit heap leach type target. So that's that's what we're going after there. You know, Mel's a pretty, um, he's been around a long time, seen a lot of projects, and he's very excited by this project. So I, that says a lot to me in terms of its potential. Well, he knows the area well, and I understand that project will be tested in Q1 of this year. Is that is that accurate, within the next couple of months? That's correct. We're, we've got our permit applications in. There's been a little bit of a delay due to the change in the Mexican government and the people that stamped the um the permit approvals, but we're, um, we believe we're on the agenda for somewhere around mid to late January. So actually very shortly here. And once we have the permit where we're, we're going to initially do, um, a few weeks of crunching because there is a thin cover on the surface there. And we want to make sure that we, you know, full, fully kind of identify the higher grade areas to drill. And then, but that'll be a fairly short program. We should get results back from that very quickly. And um, so we, you know, I'll, if we get the permit in late January, um, our schedule is to be drilling by late February, February, early March, somewhere in that range. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward to results from each of those projects. Again, I just want to provide a little context. Not only do you have two big shots on goal with the Vanadium project and the gold project, not only do you have a tiny market cap of approximately 11 to 12 million Canadian, but that's backed up by approximately 7 million in cash. Is that correct, Craig? Yeah, in fact, it's probably 7.3 at this point. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's a heck of an opportunity. I, I want to thank you for your time. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? And I, I'll, I'll add one last thing. I hope you come back on once we start getting trenching results and, and permits received for each of those projects. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to anytime. Uh, I, no, I think that covers the, you know, it's a pretty straightforward story. We we're excited about the gold project. You know, the drilling on that is pretty imminent. We're ramping up on the vanadium project and very excited by that as well. So, yeah, the next few months are going to be interesting. Fingers crossed, Craig. And if we get a raging gold bull market the way I think we're on the cusp, I think it's going to be a fun year. Yeah, no, me as well. Fantastic. Thank you, Craig. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. Appreciate it.